hello everyone today in this video we'll be discussing the super important numericals of data mining like uh, what are the possible numericals that could be asked and from the previous papers what have been asked more a number of times that i'll be discussing um, in this video and before starting with like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have any doubt uh, ping me on instagram my id is uh, underscore afuu okay so let's get started and in the uh, total subject you have these kinds of uh, numericals smc jacquard or cosine this is from the module 2 and from the module 3 you have a priori rule generation fp growth very very important from module 4 you have decision tree or hunts algorithm like just an example is given and in finally we have in module 5 k means it's very very important okay so let's get started <coughs> smc if they ask you to calculate the question okay so let's discuss the first about the cosine so the question could be as follows Solve cosine similarity for the vectors x and y where x is this one and y is this one. It's very simple when you have been given with x and y what you have to do is you have to write this formula. Just remember this formula cos of xy is equal to x dot y and a uh, value of x into value of y. So x dot y is what? x dot y uh, what you will do? You have been given with two things here right? 3 into 1. 2 into 0 plus 0 into 0 plus 5 into 0 plus 0 into 0 like that I will do till the end. And all those things you will add. Okay. That one answer you will get keep it like that only. The second factor what you need to calculate is the value of x and value of y. How do you calculate the value of x and value of y? See here, whatever is given here, 3, 2, 0, 5 and all, what you have to do is 3 square plus 2 square plus 0 square plus 5 square and so on. All the squares, some you will calculate, then you will find out the square root. That answer you will keep here. Like that we will do for y also, whatever the value of y is given, that uh, separate squares you will find out the sum of that and then the square root of it. And then you will be keeping that here. You will get these two values, right? Multiply these two values. Okay, what you will do, you will multiply these two values. Then write this formula. X dot y answer you have as 3. And these two multiplied values you already did here. Substitute that and write the answer. That is the cosine similarity. Moving on we have the second one which is SMC and Jacquard coefficient. In SMC and Jacquard coefficient you will be given with the X and Y. Wherein the X and Y can be 0 and 1. Okay. So what you have to do is for finding out SMC. Number of matching attributes by number of attributes. First count how many attributes are there total. That number and uh, above you will write a number of matching attributes. Matching attributes means what? It should be same. One zero is not same. Zero zero is same. Same same not same. Same same not same. So whichever is same count that, and whichever is not same count that. F one one means how many times one one has occurred together. Okay. How many times one one has occurred together? None of the times. How many times zero zero has occurred together? One two three four five. So that you will write as five. Like that one zero and zero one. Write down these numbers and remember this formula. Matching attributes means f of 1 1 plus f of 0 0. This is the total number of attributes f 0 1 plus f 1 0 plus f 1 1 plus f 0 0. That you will find out here. Substitute those values and find out the answer. That is SMC. Coming to a Jacquard coefficient, here just you will have what f 1 1. Instead of f 0 0, just have f 1 1. Here also cut f 0 0. See, the same formula you will use here. Just cut f 0 0 from here as well as from the denominator. What answer you get? Just substitute those values and find out the answer. That is with the Jacquard coefficient. Moving on, we have the frequent item set generation. See, in the frequent item set, item set generation, what you have to do, you'll be given with like this, okay? The TID and the items will be given to you and minimum subcount will be given like this, okay? Minimum subcount is equal to 2 it's given, but sometimes they'll give in the percentage wise. So, if they give in the percentage wise, what you have to do, if the minimum support is given as percentage value, at that time, uh, if suppose the percentage is given 25%, how do you uh, calculate its numeric equivalent? Like in the previous one, they had uh, given that minimum sub count. How do you calculate the numeric equivalent of it? To calculate the numeric equivalent of it, count how many transactions are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. In this case, how many were there? Just uh, 4 were there, right? So if 10 are given to you, what you will be doing is, you will be uh, multiplying that value which is 10 with the percentage 25 by 100 which is 25 percent into number of transactions so if you multiply these both you'll get the answer that is the minimum sub count in that way you have to kind of calculate the minimum sub count after you have done that your first step when you are given with this is calculate how many unique items are there how many unique items are there one is there two is there three is there four is there five is there so make a table here one two three four five and count how many times one has appeared one has appeared here one has appeared here so one's count is two and how many times two has appeared two has appeared here 2 has appeared here, 2 has appeared here. 3 times it has appeared, write 3. Like that, do for all the unique items. And remove those items which are less than minimum sub count. Which are less than minimum sub count means 2, 3, 3, 1, 3. Which is less than 2. This only is less than 2, just remove it. Fine. Like that, you will do for 1. Okay. Means individual items you considered. Now, how many items are remaining here? From that, what you have to do? You have to combine. Combine means what? 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 5. Take it together. Then calculate. Again, 2, 3, 2, 5. Again, 3, 5. Like that you will calculate the um, together ones. Together ones, how many they have appeared? For example, 1, 2. How many times 1, 2 has appeared together? 
one to one two has appeared here so it is one like that we'll calculate okay so for all the combinations we'll calculate and keep and whichever is whichever is less than two you'll be uh, eliminating it whatever you remain with again form some groups four groups means one three is there and two three is there one three plus two three is what one two three the union of it one two three how many times it has occurred together that you'll find out one two three has it occurred any time one two three only one time remove it the answer is actually the uh, two three five so two three five appeared here two three five appeared here it is appeared two times that is satisfying the minimum count and that's the only set which is having at least two so when, once you reach three uh, uh, and no more set is left that's your final answer fine that's how you do the fp uh, sorry uh, priori algorithm and here we have the uh, rule generation for the rule generation here also will give the minimum sub as well as minimum confidence minimum confidence is same thing 70 percent into how many transactions are given four into four you will do you'll get some answer that's uh, the uh, thing you have to consider as minimum confidence so let's see first apply the a priori algorithm same as the previous one we'll re uh, remove the uh, uh, items which are less than min sub and we'll keep on uh, doing it until we reach a frequent item set same a priori you'll reach item set then you have to do something what we have to do is we have to uh, use this formula see bc is the answer which we got right what we have to do is we have to write bc as follows and list all possible what combinations list all possible combinations bc goes to e ce goes to b b uh, b e goes to c and then uh, reverse these means all the combinations which are possible bc goes to e ce goes to b and be goes to c after i've written this one just uh, reverse it reverse means what instead of bc goes to e, you'll write e goes to bc ce goes to b b goes to c b goes to c c goes to b after i've written this one you'll uh, be remembering this formula for each you have to consider for what each you have to consider consider what if you, if you write bc goes to e okay for example if you write bc goes to e what you have to do bce how many times uh, bce has appeared together that count you will write how many times just bc has appeared that count you will write same goes for the rest also and whichever is uh, more than the confidence and less than confidence based on that you will accept and reject that's how the rule generation works and whichever is remaining that's the uh, accepted one okay means bc goes to e and c goes to b was accepted so th those two are the rules generated fine let's go to the fp growth this is the question which you would expect like this type of question construct fp tree construction and explain each step if minimum sub is not given take it as 60 percent see sometimes the minimum sub is not given at that time you have to consider what 60 percent fine so this is the type of the question which you could expect t1 t2 t3 these are the ids given and the items are given first step do the a priori algorithm first step what do the a priori algorithm a priori algorithm means first count how, how what is the um frequencies of each one how many individual items are there that you first list down means a c d e i m k n u y right after that count how many times they have appeared after you have written how many times they have appeared take this uh, total um, evaluation like for example your, your minimum support is 60 percent that means how many ids are there for so six uh, so, sorry five ids are there 60 percent of five will give you three so three is the minimum count you will get is the minimum code you will get you will eliminate all those which are less than three you will eliminate what all those which are less than three like this will eliminate this one this one this one this one and whatever is remaining uh, arrange them in descending order whatever is remaining arrange them in descending order when you arrange them in descending order this is the answer what you get okay so if they are same it's okay you can arrange it in any way like my or uh, ym eo or uh, oe that doesn't make any difference after you have arranged this one next step what you have to do is you have to again consider this set in this set whatever the items you have removed removed from here also whatever item you have removed for example here you had removed n right because n was not uh, taken into the consideration so remove n from here and arrange this item set in the descending order arrange this remaining item set in the descending order descending order means k e o m y fine so if i take each uh, id and arrange them in the descending order after removing the items which are not considered i'll get this ones then your last step is what you have to do you have to make uh, how many transactions are there that many diagrams five transactions five diagrams okay means iteratively you will be going so five diagrams will be at the last how to make this diagram start from null and uh, whatever the uh, thing you have written here in the order after removing the unwanted items then you will be uh, starting from the order k e o m y right so you'll make a null here then under five points k e o m y and for each you'll be writing one 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 okay and then uh, the next uh, transaction id is k e o y so what you will do again you will start from here null whenever you reach k see you will go in the same order k is already defined here so you need not make another branch k is already defined e is already already defined o is already defined after o what you have y here right but after this uh, only m is defined here you have not you, you have not taken y after o right so what you will do you'll make a new y and write there as one one wherever, whenever time you repeat it you'll increment by one means k o y is repeated 
e incremented o incremented and y is taken first time so it is uh, taken here as y uh, as one again what is the next one kem right so let's see kem what you will do here okay again you will come here k is there k will become three e e will become three m is there is m defined from here no you will make like this and write m is equal to one okay three three one this is what is in the next diagram three three one like that you will do for the next one as well as for the after that one k o m y k after k o is not defined so you will make a new branch all will be written as one and last one also you will do k e o after you have done k e o you will increment and keep it as such after you have done this one what you have to do is last the last step is minimum support con was what three so you will start from here whichever is less than three cut the branch whichever is what less than three what you will do cut the branch so start from here five is not less than three four is not less than three uh, this is less than three so this will be cut and this hole also will be cut this 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 hole will be cut only remaining ones is three and greater than three so what answer you get keo so just write here keo fine sometimes you get multiple answers also for example if this was like seven at that time this was also a valid answer this is also a valid answer fine that's how we solve the fp growth algorithm okay the next one is the decision tree or the hunts algorithm in hunts algorithm you have to be very careful it's a, a bit complicated but if they ask you the example you have to give the same example here okay so here what happened is there is a bank borrower okay and he has repaid the loan or not repaid the loan that previous data we have in one year what happened many people came and uh, borrowed some money some repaid some did not repay now uh, their information is given who, re who repaid and who did not repay and what were their uh, uh, homeowner marital status annual income based on that if any new person comes you have to see the previous data and uh, means uh, say the probability of that person paying the loan and not paying the loan based on previous data that's what we are doing in the Hunts algorithm okay so first thing what you have to do is count this one i'll tell you the steps follow the steps easily you can do okay <clears throat> First, uh, what is the Y class given to us? Y class is this one. We are uh, concerned about this one, default borrower, okay? Now, no, 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 no. How many times are there? Many times no are there, okay? And yes is also there. If only all no's are there, my final answer will be just no. Because none of them is yes. Uh, anyone will come, they will not repair. That's the thing which I could uh, uh, make out if all were no, right? But somewhere yes also, some repaid the loan also. So, I have to consider that as well. So, initially in the first step, what I will write? Just no, okay? default no because they are majority now i'll be just concerned with yes who were yes these three were yes now let's see in these three yes what is the first column the first column here is homeowner in, uh, who paid the loan were they homeowner no were they homeowner no were they homeowner no okay so what i will do next i'll take homeowner i'll write two things because in homeowner there are two possibilities yes or no so i'll make this uh, line here yes and no okay so who were homeowner yes means uh see for yes it was no this also yes it was no this also yes it was no so for all yes also it is no and so for all yes i wrote as no and coming to no okay here no if i consider there is yes also there is no also both are there if both are there then again i have to split it okay so here i'll write because majority are no so i'll write it as no okay because see here no is there yes is there here no no yes the count is equal two times yes two times no and three times no uh, three times yes three times no and four times no see here at the last no was more right so i'll write here as no if you did not understand you can re uh, rewind it and watch again okay so what happened is here yes and no the mixture came so what i have to do i have to consider the next one in the next one what are the possibilities single married or divorced okay single married or divorce that's the next uh, thing i will do so after i've written here no again it's, uh, i'll remove this one and i will write marital status in marital status what i can observe if you consider the married in married what you have no 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 so for all the married there is no fine so what i will do i'll write marital status i'll write married and i'll write no what about the remaining ones single and divorced in single there is no i'll take it together single and divorced no no divorced yes divorced no single yes single yes if you count totally six are there and three are no three are yes so I'll, i can take any of them yes or no it's my wish so i'll take it as yes okay if i take it as yes in the next one i'll take the uh, split as no here i'll take as yes then in the next split i have to take as no okay so here i have written as yes then what i'm just concerned with is single and married uh, sorry single and divorced because marriage are over i'll just cut off whatever is over i'll just cut off okay 
cut off this one i'll cut off this one and i'm just concerned with singles now what i will a uh, single and divorced now what i'll be doing is i'll be checking the annual income it is less than 80k okay less than 80k or greater than 80k less than or equal to uh, less than 80k or greater than or equal to k now, now let's check for less than 80k in annual income for single and um first let's cut off in a single and divorced the uh, persons who is having less than um 80k less than 80k and less than 80k so if i consider who is less than 80k one time i'm getting no one time i'm getting yes so it is equal now let's see greater than 80k greater than 80k one time is no yes equal no yes equal so here uh, what happened is both equal is coming right yes and no both are uh, coming as equal so it's my wish i can take uh, for whatever i want yes and whatever i want no okay so finally i'll divide the one as yes one as no greater than or less than here greater than or less than here okay this is all what i have to do and explain in the decision tree uh, induction hence algorithm okay the last important one is the k means algorithm very very important listen carefully you'll be given with what two things you'll be given with a set here as well as number of clusters formed number of clusters form as uh, k is equal to 2 and you'll be given as uh, with a set here and you'll be given with two mean values m1 and m2 these are the mean values you are given to us this is the mean one mean uh, this is the mean two what you're supposed to do is you have to see is uh, each uh, element is two uh, near to 4 or 12 is 3 near to 4 or 12 is 4 near to 4 or 12 is 10 near to 4 or 12 like that you will do for all the items and you will make two separate groups okay so in two separate groups, two, three, and four came close to four, and these items came close to twelve. After you have got these two groups, what you have to do? You have to uh, find out the average. Average means mean value. When you calculate the mean value, the new M1 you will get and new M2 you will get. Calculate the mean value here as well. After you have got the new M1 and M2 values, again consider this set here. Whichever item is close to three, make it as one set. Whichever item is close to uh, eighteen, make it as one set. Overlapping will happen. The changes will happen. Exchange will happen. So let it happen. Okay. So I uh, finally will get two another uh, sets here. These sets are close to um, three, and these sets are close to eighteen. After again that, you will uh, calculate the M1 and M2 values, and again you will do the uh, sets again. How many times you will do until until you get two times same mean value? Here you will got the mean value as seven. Again you got the mean value as seven. The sets did not change. Did not change. Here also set did not change. Did not change. When the set did not change, that means these M1 and M2 values are uh, the clusters, separate clusters formed. And whatever the items you have in those clusters, those are your final answers. Okay, that's all what is there in the numerical part. And make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching. And if you have any doubt, ping me on Instagram. I'll reply to you there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.